Hello everyone, so let's move on to the last lecture of this chapter which is lecture 4 of 4 where we are going to discuss about 8.3 continuity. So at the end of this lesson, students should be able to explain the continuity of a function at a point and to compute the continuity of a function at a point. So the first part of this lecture, we are going to explain the continuity of a function at a point. So the first part is to know what is the definition of continuity. A function y equal to fx that can be graphed throughout its domain with one continuous motion of a pen without lifting. Without lifting the pen is an example of continuous function. Means that we can draw the graph without lifting the pens. So let's see this graph. So can we draw this graph without lifting the pen? Yes. Just going from here to here without lifting the pen. So this is a continuous a example of continuous function. And then for this one, we also can draw it without lifting the pen. So this is also a continuous. How about this one? So this is a straight line. And then we are going to lift our pen to draw the another part of the graph. So, there is a comma here. So, we cannot directly sketch the graph without lifting the pen. The pen. So, this is a discontinuous function. And the last one also, we cannot draw the graph without lifting, with, without lifting the pen. So, this is also a discontinuous function. So, what is definition of continuity at a point? We need to know what is the definition of continuity at a point because this is how we are going to explain the continuity of a function. A function fx is continuous at a point x equal to c if and only if it meets all these three following conditions. The first part, fc defined, means that the value of y at x equal to c is exists. So, we can find what is the value of f of c. And then the second one, the limit of fx as x approach to c exists. What it means by limits exist at x equal to c means that the limit from the left hand side and the limit from the right hand side is equal. And then the last one, point 1 and 2 is the same. So, the fc here is equal to the limit of fx as x approach to C. So they have to meet the these three conditions. How about this this continuity at a point means that it doesn't meet one of these or uh, all of these three conditions. If a function of f is not continuous at point c, we said that f is discontinuous at c, or c is a point of discontinuity of f. So this is how we explain the continuity. Let's do some example for this part. So, state the definition of the continuity of a function at a point. So, this question is possible in examination. Eh? So, how to state the definition of continuity? It means that we have to list out all the conditions given to have the continuity of a function at a point. So, what are the conditions? The first one, fc defined. The second one, limit of fx as x approach to c exists and then fc equal to the limit of fx as x approach to c means that the point 1 is equal to point 2 okay so let's continue with the second example so we want to discuss the continuity at point x equal to 1 2 and 3 so for this question we have uh, some minor uh, error where the graph here, it should be, for the second interval here, the value of uh, the circle here, it should be empty dot. And then, for the first interval, at x equal to 1, it should be dense dots. So, please do the correction first. So, let's, uh, let's solve for this one. We have to discuss the continuity at point x equal to 1, x equal to 2, and x equal to 3. So, for each point, we have to discuss whether the conditions meet to get the continuity or not. 
Okay, so let's start with the first point which is when x equal to 1. So we check from the graph at x equal to 1, the first condition which is f of x, does it define or not? So for this one, f of 1, we can see that the value of x equal to 1, y is equal to 0. So f1 is equal to 0, so f1 is defined. And then for the second condition, we need to check the limit. So does, does the limit exist? To check the limit exists, we need to find the limit from the left side and from the right hand side. So the limits from the right hand side, we just check from the graph. So this value of x approach to 1, the y is approach to value of 1. And then from the left hand side, when x approach to 1 from the left hand side, the graph is approaching to value of 0. So does the limit exist? No, because the limit from the left hand side and right hand side is not the same. It's not equal. So the limit does not exist. Means that we can stop to till this condition only. We don't have to check the third conditions. So what we can conclude, hence f is discontinuous at x equal to 1. Because it doesn't meet the conditions. Okay, next part. When x equal to 2. So, from the graph, we can see that f2 is equal to, where is the value of x equal to 2? So, this is the dense dot when x equal to 2. What is the value of y? y equal to 2. So, f2 equal to 2 is defined. And then, the second one, we want to find the limit. Does the limit exist? So, we check from the right-hand side and from the left-hand side. So, from the right-hand side, we can see that the graph as x approach to 2, y is approaching to 1. And then, from the left-hand side, as x approach to 2 from the left-hand side, the graph is approaching to value of, the value of y is approaching the value of 1. So, does the limit exist? Yes, the limit exists. Because the limit from the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. But, how about the third condition? F2 equal to the limit of F as x approach to 2 or not? Limit of fx as x approach to 2 is equal to 1. f2 is equal to 2. So, it is not the same. So, does it continuous? No. f is discontinuous at x equal to 2. So, we need to check all these three conditions. And then, at last, it doesn't meet the third condition. So, it is discontinuous. Next. At x equal to 3. So, we check f of 3. So, f of 3 is equal to 2. So, f3 is defined. And then, the limit as x approach to 3 from the right side, it's going to value of 2. And then, from the left hand side, also going to value of y equal to 2. So, does the limit exist? Yes, because the value is the same. And then, the third one, does the f3 equal to the limit of fx as x approach to 3? Yes. The value is the same, which is 2. Right? So, is this continuous at x equal to 3? Yes. This function is continuous at x equal to 3. So, lesson B. Compute the continuity of a function at a point. So, we want to compute the continuity. Let's do the example for this part. So, let's say we have function of fx defined as x squared plus 1 as x less than 2 and x plus 3 for x more than or equal to 2. So, this is a piecewise function. Usually, if we have a piecewise function, we will draw and indicate which part of the domain that has the function 1 and function 2. So, it will be different function for each domain, right? Okay. So, is fx continuous at x equal to 2? So, first, sketch the x axis at x equal to 2. We have separate two functions. So, the left side of the value of 2 is equal to function x squared plus 1. The right side of function, the right side function of x equal to 2 is equal to x plus 3. So, to find the limits, we have to uh, to find to check whether fx continuous or not. We have to check all these three conditions. What is the first condition? We need to check the value of f of two. So now 
x is equal to 2, right? We want to check the continuous when x is equal to 2. So f of 2 is equal to, we can choose which function. The second function, why? Because it's x more than or equal to 2. So the function is 2, sorry, x plus 3. So 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. And then the second function, uh, the second one is we need to check the limits. So does the limit exist? So what is the limit from the left hand side? What is the limit from the right hand side? So the left hand side we will use which function? x squared plus 1. So x squared plus 1 and then x approach to 2 from the left side. We substitute the value of 2. What we get is 2 squared plus 1 which is equal to 5. And then the limit from the right side is the function x plus 3. So substitute the function x plus 3 as x approach to 2 from the right side. So we get 2 plus 3 which is equal to 5. So does the limit exist? Yes, the limit exists because both are the same which is equal to 5. And then the third one is to check whether point 1 is equal to point 2. So does the value f2 equal to the limit of fx as x approach to 2? Yes, the value is 5. So it is the same. So is this function continuous at x equal to 2? Yes, the function is continuous as x equal to 2. The next example, so let hx equal to, there are three separate functions here, 20x squared minus k as x less than 4, p as x equal to 4, and kx cubed minus 5 as x more than 4. Find the value of k such that limit hx as x approach to 4 exists. Hence, find the value of p such that h is continuous at x equal to 4. So now we have two parts of the question. The first one, we want to find the value of k. The second one is to find the value of p. Hence, means that we have to use the result from the first part of these questions. So, the limit of hx exists as x approach to 4. So, we need to find what is the limit of hx. So, the limit hx exists if the limit of hx from the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So, as usual for the piecewise function, we need to draw on the x axis first to indicate which domain with, with which function, functions. Okay, so when x equal to 4, the function h is equal to p. Okay, so we put x equal to 4, h equal to P. And then the left side of 4, we have a function of 20x squared minus k. And the right side of function, we have, with the right side of 4, we have kx cubed minus 5. Okay, now we have this uh, sketch of the graph on the x axis. Now we want to find the value of h as limit hx exists as x approach to 4. What it means by exists means that the limit from the left hand side is equal to the limit as x approach to 4 from the right hand side. So we just have to substitute which function on which side. So for x approach to 4 from the left hand side, we use function. Yes, we use function 2x squared minus k. And from the right hand side, we use function kx cubed minus 5. Now we just need to substitute what is the value of 4 into the equations. So we have 24 square minus k equal to k multiplied with 4 cubed minus 5. So calculate everything and rearrange so that k will be the subject. So what is the value of k? So we have k equal to 5. So we finish the first part of the equations. Next, the question asks you, hence find the value of p as function continuous at x equal to 4. Means that the condition 1 and condition 2 is the same. The value for these two conditions is equal. So, what is f1? f1 is f, uh, sorry, not f, but h. The function here is h. So, h at 4, it should be equal to limit of f, uh, hx equal to, 
our sx approach to 4. So, for the left side, we know the function is equal to p. How about the right side, hx? So, we can use either approaching to the left from the left or approaching from the right. So, here for the example, we use the limit of hx as x approach to 4 from the left side. So, what function we have here? So, we have 2x squared minus k. What is k? k is equal to 5. So, 2x squared minus 5. So, 20 multiplied by 4 squared minus 5. And then we know h4 from the graph here and from the uh, function given, we have x as x equal to 4, h equal to p. So, we can find what is the value of p by calculating the right side, which is equal to 315. So, done. The next example, 5. Given that the function fx equal to a piecewise function of ax plus 5 as x less than or equal to 1, and x squared minus 1 as x more than 1. So, if fx is continuous for all value of x, find the values of the constant a. So, we want to find what is this value of a. So, it means that if it's continuous, means that it satisfies all the conditions for the continuity. So, as usual, for piecewise function, we sketch the x at x exists to find which part of the function on which part of domain right so the left side of one it should be a x plus five the right side of one it should be x squared minus one okay so fx is continuous for all value of x so it must be continuous at x equal to one okay so if it's continuous at x equal to one means that we can use any of the conditions to find the value of a. So, for this one, we can use the second condition. means that limit fx as x approach to 1 exists. So, what is limit fx as x approach to 1 exists? means that the limit of fx as x approach to 1 from the right side is equal to the limit of fx as x approach to 1 from the left side. So, which function we should use for the, we should use for the right side of 1 so, it will be x squared minus 1. So, replace the fx with x squared minus 1. And then, limit of fx as x approach to 1 from the left side, which function we should use? Yes, ax plus 5. So, we just have to replace the function fx here with ax plus 5. So, now what we need to do is just replace the value of x inside the limit functions. So, 1 squared minus 1 equal to a multiplied by 1 plus 5. So, what is the value of A? We just need to rearrange. So, the A is equal to negative 5. So, we get the answer from the second condition of continuity. So, example 6. Given that function fx is a piecewise function with 3x for x less than 1, ax plus b for x from negative 1 to 4, and 1 minus x squared as x more than Four. We want to find we want to determine the values of constant a and b such that fx is continuous in interval negative infinity to infinity. So what it means continuous in interval in negative infinity to infinity, it means that it will be continuous at all points on x exists. So it include the x equal to negative one and x equal to four. So from here we know that it satisfies all the conditions in continuity. So, one of the conditions is the limit. Hence, limit fx as x approach to negative 1 and x approach to 4 exists. We can use this condition to find the value of a and b. So, this is the graph as usual, not the graph the sketch on the x axis. The left side of negative 1, we have function 3x. In between negative 1 and 4, we have function ax plus b. And the right side of 4, we have function 1 minus x squared. So, to find the limit as x approach to negative 1. So, what is the function from the left-hand side? It should be 
3x and the right hand side it should be a x plus b so now we just have to replace what is the value of x so we have 3 multiplied with negative 1 equal to a multiplied with negative 1 plus b so this is the first equation which is negative a plus b is equal to negative 3 now at x equal to 4 applying the limits definitions existence of limits so limit from the left hand side it should be equal to the limit from the right hand side Okay, so what is the function from the left hand side? It will be a x plus b, and then from the right hand side, it could be it will be one minus x square. So just substitute x equal to four into the function. We have a multiplied by four plus b equal to one minus four squared, which is we have the second equation equal to four a plus b equal to negative. 15. Now to get the value of a and b, we just have to solve simultaneously. So solving these two equations simultaneously, we can do one of these method, which is equation two minus equation one. So four minus four a minus negative a will be five a. B minus b will be zero equal to negative fifteen minus negative three will be negative twelve. So a equal to negative twelve over five. So to get the value of b, we just need to substitute this value of a into one of this equation. So substitute a equal to negative 12 over 5 into equation number 1. So what we get is negative of negative 12 over 5 plus b equal to negative 3. So b is equal to negative 27 over 5. So we get the value of a and b by using the definition of continuity. Done. So that's all for this chapter. So, I hope you guys enjoy the video and you can check back all the previous, previous videos to do your revision. Thank you everyone. Good luck for the examination.